So, you're interested in classic World of Warcraft. Maybe like myself, you're a private server enthusiast who's been ready for classic since it was announced. Maybe you play WoW right now, but you haven't played vanilla since it was actually vanilla. Uh, maybe you started playing WoW within the past 10 years and uh, you never actually played vanilla, or maybe you never played WoW before. Hell, maybe you've never even played an MMO. Well then, whoever you are, welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Classic. I hope to be basic enough so that if you're an absolute MMO beginner, you can understand what you're getting into without the entire game being spoiled or without all this stuff overwhelming you. But at the same time, I want to be thorough enough to maybe refresh the WoW veterans or refresh even some of the private server players. But first, we have to start somewhere. So, you bought the game and set up your account and you logged in. And the very first thing you'll notice is that you have to decide on a realm or a server. Each server can only hold so many people and you can only play with the people that are on the same server as you. For people who have played WoW recently or played retail WoW, that means no cross realm stuff here. Classic WoW has four different types of servers. PVE, or player versus environment. PVP, player versus player. RP, role playing. And RP PVP. PvP means that Horde players can attack Alliance players, and vice versa, in most areas of the open world. We call this, generally, World PvP. Normal, or PvE servers, only allows dueling and voluntary World PvP. RP means that people on the server are more likely to engage in role-playing activities and getting into their characters and that sort of thing. And RP PvP is an RP server where PvP is enabled. We can go more into this in the social aspect of Classic WoW later, but right now, you have a character to create. First, let's start with the factions and the races. There are two factions, the Horde and the Alliance, and they both have four races each. The Horde has the Orcs, Undead, Torn, and Trolls. The Alliance has the Humans, Dwarves, Night Elves, and Gnomes. Each race has certain active and passive abilities, different starting zones, and access to different classes. We'll get into those next time. So let's start with the Alliance, who are located mostly on the continent of the Eastern Kingdoms. The humans start in Elwyn Forest, with their capital city being Stormwind. They can play as one of six classes, Warrior, Paladin, Rogue, Priest, Mage, or Warlock. Humans, first, have an active ability that increases stealth detection for 20 seconds, which makes them more likely to spot sneaky rogues or feral druids in PvP, or the occasional stealth mobs in PvE. They get a 5% bonus to spirit, a stat that gives you better health and mana regeneration. They have increased weapon skill with swords and maces, which helps you not miss your attacks. And they also get a 10% bonus to reputation gains. Now reputation is a lot like another experience bar that you level up with specific certain groups of NPCs in the game. Having a higher reputation with a certain group can sometimes give you discounts at their vendors or even unlock the ability to buy certain items. More on that later. Next we have the dwarves. They start in the snowy Dunmoro, with their capital city being Ironforge. They also share this starting zone and city with the gnomes. The dwarves can play as one of five classes, warrior, paladin, hunter, rogue, or priest. The dwarves have a nice defensive cooldown ability called Stoneform, which makes the caster immune from and removes bleeds, poisons, and diseases. After that, it also gives you a 10% increase to armor for eight seconds. They have an increased weapon skill with guns, however this doesn't mean that you get to start with guns if you're not a hunter, so warriors and rogues still have to go train that skill. They also have a plus 10 frost resistance passively, which makes it easier to resist frost spells. This resistance applies to both PvP and PvE spells and effects, by the way. They also finally have a nifty toggle ability called Track Treasure, which highlights chests and crates on your minimap. Now onto the Night Elves. They start in Teldrassil, way over on the other continent of Kalimdor, with their capital city being Darnassus. The Night Elves can play as one of five classes, Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Priest, and are the only Alliance race allowed to play as Druid. They have a nifty toggled ability called Shadow Meld, which allows them to be invisible so long as they are standing still. This is great for trying to get the jump on people in PvP, and trying to avoid hostile NPCs that are patrolling by you in PvE. If you happen to play as a rogue or a cat form druid, your class's stealth ability actually gives you a higher level of stealth instead. Night elves also have a passive extra 1% dodge chance, which actually really comes in handy. They have a passive wisp form, which, when you die, gives you increased movement speed as a ghost when you try to run back to your body. They also have plus 10 nature resistance, which makes it easier to resist nature spells, like the dwarves with their frost resistance. And last but not least, the gnomes. Like I said before, the gnomes share their starting zone of Dunmoro with the dwarves. 
The gnomes come up short on classes and can only choose from one of four. Warrior, Rogue, Mage, or Warlock. Gnomes have an activated ability called Escape Artist, which allows them to remove any immobilization or slow effect. They also have a plus 10 arcane resistance, which makes them harder to be hit by arcane spells. Gnomes love to tinker, so should you choose to pursue the engineering profession, you start at level 15 instead of level 1. They also get a 5% increase to their intelligence stat. Now, intelligence gives you more mana, a higher chance to critical strike with spells, and it increases the rate at which you gain weapon skill. Now onto the Horde, located mostly on the continent of Kalimdor. First, we have the Orcs, who start in Duratar, with their capital city being Orgrimmar. They share this starting zone with the Trolls. The Orcs can play as one of five classes, Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Shaman, or Warlock. First, they have an active cooldown ability called Blood Fury, which increases your melee attack power by 25% for 15 seconds, but also reduces healing effects done to you by 50% for 25 seconds. They are hard-headed and stubborn, and they get a 25% increased resistance to stuns. They have increased pet damage, which applies to the pets of either the Hunter or Warlock class. They also get an increased weapon skill with axes. Next up, we have the Undead, also known as the Forsaken. The Undead start on the other continent of the Eastern Kingdoms in Tirithal Glade, their capital city being the Undercity. Undead can be one of five classes, Warrior, Rogue, Priest, Mage, or Warlock. Undead have an active ability called Will of the Forsaken that can grant immunity to and remove fear, sleep, or charm effects. Now, this may not seem fun or effective at first, but it can really upset an Alliance Warlock or a Priest, and it can often come in handy in some PvE encounters. They have a channeled ability called Cannibalize, where they literally eat the corpse of an undead or humanoid and gain 30% of their health over 10 seconds. They have a passive plus 10 shatter resistance, and they have increased underwater breathing duration. Moving on to the Tauren. The Tauren come from the plains of Mulgore, with their capital city being Thunderbluff. They can only be one of four classes. Warrior, Hunter, Shaman, but like the Night Elves, are the only race on the Horde that can be Druids. Kind of a special club, this class. First, Torn have an ability called War Stomp, which after 0.5 seconds stuns up to five enemies in melee range. Torns are naturally tanky, with a passive 5% maximum health increase. They also start at level 15 Herbalism, should you choose that profession. And, like the Night Elves, they have a passive plus 10 nature resistance. And lastly, we have the Trolls. Now, as I said before, they start with the Orcs and Duratar, and can pick from one of six classes. Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Priest, Shaman, or Mage. The Trolls get an offensive active ability called Berserking, which increases their attack speed or casting speed based on how much health they are missing, starting at 10% when at max health. Trolls are born hunters, and they get a 5% damage increase to beasts, and they get an increased weapon skill for bows. They're also known for their regenerative abilities, having 10% increased health regen, and that also continues during combat. Health regens extremely slowly on its own during combat, but for trolls, it's a little better. Well, that about covers it for races. You'll hear a lot of people say that, in the end, your choice in race doesn't make any game-breaking impact on your performance in either a PvE or PvP. And don't worry, no one is going to kick you from a group for not being a Tauren Warrior tank over a Troll Warrior tank, not even in high-tier rating. And if you're curious about min-maxing your character, or you want to learn more about the race class combinations, Moonstai has a great series of videos that talks about exactly that, and it goes in more depth. Link in the description. Now I know for probably most of you, this was very, very basic information. And you probably know most, if not all, of what I covered today. My goal is to get people more interested in Classic WoW, but also to help them understand what they're getting into so that they don't encounter a certain system or feature that's different from current MMOs or current retail WoW, and then automatically write it off. Now, my plan here is for this to just be the first installment in a series that follows your experience as you would encounter it. So next time, we'll talk about what you'll encounter in your first couple of steps and how combat works, so stick around.